thank you again for joining us with the Bear Facts Live from Art Basel, Hong Kong. And again, thank you East West Bank for sponsoring this edition of the Bear Facts Live. As you know, East West is the largest independent bank in Southern California and one of, if not the, top bank servicing the art world. East West believes in the power of art to inspire, transcend borders. We're gonna transcend some borders, right? Okay. Build bridges, I don't know about that. Big bridge destroyed in America today, but we're into bridges and to nurture greater understanding. So for this segment, we're joined by a, an art collector and a patron of the arts, Evan Chow. Welcome to the Bear Facts Thank Live. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, it's let's, an honor. Let's get right to it. You know, Art Fair's been on for four hours. What'd you buy? Um, I got a few things, a few under, you know, on reserve. Um, I, you know, and I'm gonna go through a bit. I spent an hour-ish on the third floor and I haven't gone through uh, most of the first floor yet. I'm gonna resume after this. So my sample size may not be, you know, um, so you start the with, a, the, with the newer yes. works and work your way to the yes. to the classic. Yes, yes, exactly. And I found some good stuff. I think I am uh, I'm most impressed by gallery gallery friends who are back some back after ten years, after five years before the pandemic, and some of them are really putting on their A show in their booths. They Such really, as. Uh, one of my favorite booths is uh, Marion Boski's booth. Uh, she brought three amazing artists, uh, Jamie Holmes, uh, Michaela Yearwood Dan, um, and another artist, and it's all uh, amazing works that she put on. Um, and another um, great booth I love was Jessica Silverman. She put together a showcase of both Asian artists and Western artists from her amazing roster. And uh, one of them is Hong Kong. So she, she's showing some Team Hong Kong spirit. Usually I get a lot of press releases, like in the first uh, hour of the fair. Yeah. One year, David Kronansky sent an email one minute in the fair that he sold out the fair, uh, which was kind of hard to do. But the, the only email I've gotten so far was from Jessica's PR firm. So uh, clearly she's done well. She has. Did you buy something from her? Not this time, but we are in very close conversation. But I love learning about new artists in her program. I actually visited her in San Francisco in LA last two months. Now do you have yeah. a strategy when you go to art fairs of like how you move through? You talked about focusing on the galleries more than the artist. Um, I focus, you know, we work with, a, a, you know, like we try to focus on a few programs that we work really close uh, with. And then there are also some specific artists that we do a lot of research beforehand and kind of, you know, make sure we are ready to go and we you know, collect deep. So you've looked at the PDFs or you're, yes. you're like done your homework so that you can make your decision in 30 yes. seconds, right? Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes even digitally, to be honest, yeah. Have you ever bought something digitally? And I guess during lockdown, it was more required that you got and you went, uh-oh. Ah, huh. um, so far, so good. You know, I think it depends on the painting. Like, you know, some paintings, you know, um, with a detailed video of the texture um, and, the, and, 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 the, and, you know, the layers, you can get a good idea if you already collect them. But if it's a new medium, sometimes it, it, it could be pretty risky, yeah. I mean, sometimes they're better in person. Yeah. And sometimes they're not. I mean, yes. it can work both ways. I think the art market has relied a little bit too heavily on the digital experience because of representation of the art. Yes. Are you surprised when you go to the booths now and it's like, oh, it looks like this? Yes, yeah. I, I, you know, today I've, I've definitely seen one or two artists which kind of looks better digitally than, than in person. And, and I kind of slipped it and I, said, I felt a bit, bit bad. I was like, oh, it looks better on PDF. And yeah. Oh, you said that to somebody? Yeah, I said it. And, I was like, and, then, and then there was like a bit of awkward silence. So I thought, oh, it's still beautiful. <laughs> well, I wouldn't yeah, say many of the right. gallerists are, are too open to any criticism, especially on opening day of the fair. Yes. How much do you spend of your time socializing on the floor, saying hello versus looking at art on opening day? Um, actually, it's, it's a great question. That, I, I feel that that has changed. I think, you know, five years ago, um, art fairs, you know, we're so used to, okay, 10 minute decisions, 30 minute decisions and go, 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 go. And these days, you know, like in the first hour, um, you know, things you either, 
you know, you're, you're, you've already decided or you're just learning about it or starting a conversation. So we actually had like a few like detailed 15, 20 minute conversations about new artists. Um, that, that's first time in Hong Kong. So, though, you know, so we, 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 we find it a bit more chill these days. Yeah. I think a lot of the dealers say they like that. Yep. It's not so crowded. I can talk more. On the other hand, I think they'd rather be sending invoices every 45 seconds. Yes, yes. So I think it's, are people coming up to you and saying, what are you looking at? What are you buying? Uh -huh. Yes, they do. Yeah. Do you tell them? I do. I do. I try my best. Yeah. When they, when they try to, you know, start a conversation and try to really um, see what fits in their program and start a meaningful dialogue, you know, we, we do take our time to, to do that. Yeah. Because that can be disruptive to like you want to see what you want to see if you're being stopped yes all the time yes yeah they, they they usually know you know on the first day you know to keep it a bit you know you know like concise and and a, you know like a, a bit more you know uh, and are these all people that you know locally or are they from all over Asia or America or the people that you're like sort of um, engaging with uh -huh. yeah uh, mainly those who are new or from other parts who especially i think art fairs are great for galleries that are not in major cities you know for example if it's from mexico city or sao paulo which you know asian collectors don't really go or having in, just come from mexico city i can tell you mexico city to hong kong not such a good connection. No, so I can not understand. At all. Yes, I remember going. you were stopping by Taipei and yeah, yep, two and stops the, yeah. and all and that. Was... So you see this as, from the perspective, as a global collector, or do you see yourself wanting to support the local scene or uh -huh. the Asian scene or all of the above? None of the above. Both, I think. Yeah. So our collection is very global. Uh, there are a few themes, uh, but uh, which know, the themes are? Which are uh, abstraction, geometric abstraction, minimalism. These are some of our core focuses. But I also like some figurative and and you know uh, uh, you know uh, sculptures. So. Well, wouldn't you just say then back to the digital? My mom being a famous minimalist artist named Joe Bear. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. It doesn't look very good on the phone or the computer. So uh, minimalism has really gone way down, I think largely because putting up a, um, you know, the Carl Andre on a phone uh, just looks like, doesn't look yes. like much. Yeah, what are you looking at? What are you yeah. looking at? And figurative art pops with color. Well, yeah. I recognize that's, you know, somebody at the bodega or something. Yeah. Do you think that that's been in play a little bit with how you've experienced art over the last, certainly during lockdown? Yes, I, I totally agree with you. Like minimalism art is like, you know, I think a Flavin or a Judd would not do so well on You can't brag at, yeah. at here on my phone, here's my Flavin. Yes, Strangers or McCracken. Can, yeah. McCracken, people are gonna look at you and say, that's just the pink blob. Yes, yes, exactly, yeah. So does that become a buying opportunity for you? Yes, yeah, I think so. You know, I think, but, you know, these pieces really need to be, those are the pieces that you can't, you know, decide digitally. You definitely need to be there and, and to make the final decision. Yeah. yeah, they're about beauty and the sublime, and yeah. you, that doesn't come across the internet. And I think, but the figurative work, I think, is certainly easier. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. It's, the colors, the composition is much more. Now, do you feel themes changing though from this year or from last year? This year, I think um, it's some new themes because more galleries from different geographic uh, 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 lo lo backgrounds and different programs. So definitely more variety. But I think, you know, for the mega galleries, they're always pretty consistent. They always bring the same, you know, um, you know, the, the, the mix of their old and new um, uh, stables. But I would say yeah. some people are saying there's less identity art. There certainly feels like less art from African-American yes. artists that that would be, seemed like that was a speculative trend that seems to have softened. Uh -huh. would, would you say that you notice that today? Uh, yeah, you're right. I, I, I haven't, having gone through half of it, I see less of it, but I think you know, um, there is some still some interest. I think especially mainland Chinese collectors love, you know, uh, you know African portraiture and figurative. Um, Why is that? It seems to me, 
it's kind of an interesting question. Does the, does the content really resonate with that audience? It seems so distant. Yeah, that yeah I you're wonder right. yeah. why that's been the case. Yeah, I think, I think there, I think there, for, for a lot of Chinese collectors I spoke to, I think there is a bit of historical resemblance, you know, portraiture, you know, the, you know, you know, like old China and, um, you know, um, uh, some, you know, like some of the, you know, like the, the, the school that, that they went to also teach the same, you know, like the Ghana school of, of you know, uh, art, which produced a lot of the great um, African artists. Um, and I think there's a lot of similarities with some of the, what the Chinese uh, art schools are teaching as well. Yeah. That's interesting because when I was working with some of those artists and the big galleries were all like, let's try it out in Hong Kong. Uh -huh. And I thought, but your content has nothing to do with that. But maybe I was looking at it wrong that I wasn't understanding the cultural history, which I don't, uh -huh. of this region, that I didn't know that. So for me, that's pretty interesting that there's more of a connection there uh -huh. than I just casually assumed. Uh -huh. Yeah. You, you travel a lot, right? Yes, so, I do. Yeah. And you're, tell us a little bit about your art patronage and, sure. and museum sure. work. Sure, would love to. So uh, one of the museums that I support um, uh, very deeply is the New Museum in New York. I joined their International Council in, the two, in 2015, 16, and then joined their Board of Trustees in 2018. And I'm coming up with my, I'm coming up to my third term now, which is a very exciting chapter. There is going to be a new expansion that's going to take the floor space to double its current size, uh, from the current sauna building to a new extended Rem Cool House o OMA design building. So I was actually just in New York two weeks ago to catch the last day of of the the Judy Chicago show before they close for that full expansion and. Will be open a year later, uh, which is super exciting, and um, and it has been a difficult time for development and and you know museums uh, during COVID, and I'm super proud of the team for um, you know pulling that through, and we're organizing a soul trip for all the patrons coming up in September, where we will go to the Guangzhou Biennale in Seoul and visit some spaces as well. And how have you applied? being in the board of the new museum to what's going on in the not-for-profit world of Hong Kong? Um, there, there's actually a lot of um, uh, uh, expertise and insight that I was able to leverage off on. So in Hong Kong, I mainly serve on the Hong Kong Art Center, I serve on the board of the Hong Kong Art Center, which operates the Hong Kong Art School. In Hong Kong, most museums are like the UK or Europe where it's government funded or government appointed board. So, uh, in terms of uh, financial management, managing uh, operating surplus deficit, engaging with institutions and collectors for patronage, those areas so are they things. have a collection or they're they don't they're, they're like an art center like a kunsala you would think. kind of yeah but it's also a bit more mass so there's a lot of kids program there's a lot of elderly public art program where you know we take art to the masses so it's. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, you know it's a it's kind of like a broader you know family experience. Yeah. So would you say that the two most important things that's happened from the outside coming to Hong Kong would be our Basel Hong Kong and M Plus? Yes, I think so. Yes, definitely, definitely, and also the Palace Museum. I think it's also you know on the map because they're doing great things right now with the National Gallery and some. Uh, uh, very successful shows as well, yeah. Now, just to tie up a little bit about the art fair, how many times will you come to the fair? This fair. This fair. Um, I am planning uh, to, today and tomorrow. Yeah, I think tomorrow I can come back to to kind of revisit some of the new homework and new, new you know, Are my new radar. Are people letting you, instead of saying you have like, you better decide the next 45 seconds because there's 20 people behind you. Uh -huh. Are they now saying, you can let me know tomorrow uh, a little bit more now. Have you, 
feeling a little bit of that yeah, or is yeah. it like I think so you know, yeah, yeah next and they're looking over your shoulder to yeah. see who's in the booth which is it I think it's less you're right there you know it's 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 not as rush anymore so it's no longer like 10 minute 30 minute you're the fifth or the you third ever, or you yeah. ever come home from the fair or a fair someplace else and go oh my god what did I do I bought too much or yeah, what's I, the damage yeah what's the damage <laughs> yeah. have you done that in the earlier years, I have to admit, because in the earlier years when the art fairs were, you know, like booming, you get so pressured into, you, you know, like this is the only chance, you got 10 minutes, you know, don't regret, you know, all that pressure. But as your collection, you know, grows and you're kind of a bit more selective, you kind of don't get you, yourself you really, affected. You yeah. cannot renege at an art fair because it may be, especially for those galleries you say, yep. that do so much of their business there. If you say yes, and two days from now you say no, they probably lost that chance maybe forever uh -huh. to sell that piece. If there's a gallery exhibition, yep. and you say the next day, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, I measured, it doesn't fit, I don't wanna do it. That's kind of okay yep. to have a little bit of buyer's remorse, but if you do buyer's remorse, uh -huh. At the fair, and by the way, my, one of my clients did that on a $3 million piece. And believe me, it was not a pleasant conversation oh. to go back. So don't do that. Uh, nope, never, never. Yeah, I've, I've also heard people having that experience. And they're just like, three months later, they're like, it's, a, it's an installation piece as well. So it's like, they were like. And they like, see all these invoices. It's like, yeah. uh-oh, what am I going to tell yeah. you know my my wife or husband and my business manager. It's like, yeah, yeah. So what do I do, right? What do yeah. I do? So, <laughs> Literally. So no longer doing that? I've never done that. Never. Yeah, never done that. But I've heard if he's stories of others. You know. Yeah, <laughs> never, never. But I've heard, you know, galleries facing that problem and I, I feel really bad for them. So last question I wrote recently about the art fair, I said, evil question mark, necessary question mark, necessary evil question mark which is it for you sorry you you, you mean art fairs in general uh, evil question mark uh, necessary question mark or necessary evil question mark ah uh, i think it's necessary necessary yeah, i think it's necessary it's very important for the ecosystem and to have the presence here in hong kong which is the hub of asia uh, and to be in Basel, it's a different experience. In New York, London is a different experience. So I think it's it has a very important role in the in the ecosystem. And I'll take us out with a thought that that you made that I think is really good. It's like if you use it to develop relationships with the galleries you're interested in, yep. that's a necessary and valuable thing. If you're using it as shopping, yep. maybe not so. Yeah. So. So yes, maybe shopping is evil, but you know, yeah. <laughs> so the we'd like to, is... to give a big shout out again to East West Bank for partnering with us to make our guests insights the dynamic and, and accessible ones they were. Thank you, Evan, Thank for you joining Josh. us.